Spider-Man Far From Home is filled to the brim with easter eggs and references, just like every other MCU film that's ever hit theaters. Now, Some are obvious, while others are subtle shoutouts to Spider-Man and other characters histories in the comics. Now, We did a part 1 of this list earlier, and now we're back at it with the top 10 easter eggs you missed in Spider-Man Far From Home. Part 2 And fair warning friends, this list contains a ton of spoilers for the movie, so be warned if you haven't already seen it. With that in mind, let's get to it. And at number 10, Iron Man is everywhere. Perhaps one of the most obvious easter eggs throughout the entire film is the presence of the planet mourning Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. There's literally tribute art to the fallen hero everywhere. Right off the bat we see Iron Man student art in the background of the classroom scene with Peter, Ned and MJ. At the airport they arrive at in Italy, there's a large Iron Man poster in the background. And then in Prague you can spot Iron Man graffiti all over the place, including a little candle lit vigil. You know who you don't see tribute art to? Vision. All he got was a pixelated photo at the beginning of the Midtown High's Tribute School morning news video. So, I mean, there really wasn't a better photo. I mean, do we care? It's vision. Moving on to number nine, BFP. Here's one that some of you may have actually noticed from the Far From Home trailer. When Peter's busy packing for his Euro trip and choosing to not bring his Spidey suit, we get a brief glimpse at his suitcase, which features the initials BFP on them. This is without a doubt a reference to Uncle Ben, with his initials standing for Benjamin Franklin Parker. And at eight, Ned and Betty. In Far From Home, Ned strikes up a relationship with Betty Brandt. It's pretty brief, with the two deciding at the end of the film that it is time to move on, yet they remain friends. Ned and Betty's brief romance also occurred in the comics, in which Betty married Ned Leeds, the future hobgoblin. That being said, Ned doesn't really seem to be an adaptation of Ned Leeds, and actually shares more in common with Miles Morales' best friend than he does the hobgoblin character, so. But still, neat coincidence. In at 7, the Black Dahlias. One of Peter's main goals in the film is to act out his master plan in Europe, his six step attempt at telling MJ his feelings. He goes and gets her a necklace, a glass Black Dahlia, which is inspired by her adoration and interest in the Black Dahlia murders. It's something she also confirms when she reveals that Happy gave it to her while Peter was off fighting Mysterio in the film's climax battle. But here's something that is neat. The Black Dahlia is actually something that has grander meaning in the comics as far as Marvel is concerned. There's an all girl gang in the comics called the Black Dahlias who go around protecting women on the streets against abuse and exploitation, which seems like an ideology up MJ's alley if we're being perfectly honest. There's some speculation that perhaps she might play a more heroic role in the future of the MCU, with her already subverting the traditional role of Mary Jane Watson. And at 6, Sandman. In our part 1 of this list, we mentioned that there were quite a handful of comic book references that appeared in Far From Home, including one that referenced the very first Spider-Man appearance in Amazing Fantasy issue 15, and another that referenced Elemental Hydro-Man's debut too. In the scene at the beginning of the film where Nick Fury and Maria Hill first encounter Mysterio and a rock elemental who looks a whole hell of a lot like Sandman, you'll notice that there's a license plate in the frame that reads 463. That is a reference to Sandman's first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man Man issue 4 from 1963. Up next at 5, Molten Man. Speaking of elemental comic book references, in Prague when Mysterio and Spider-Man duke it out with the Molten Man, there's another license plate that reads 2865 SEP, which is a reference to when Molten Man first debuted in the comics. His first appearance was in Amazing Spider-Man issue 28, which came out in September of 1965. Another comic book reference for you here, in at 4, Crusher Hogan. In the beginning of the film, after Peter dressed up as Spider-Man to help out Aunt May at a charity event, the two go backstage and Happy Hogan arrives with a big check donation for the organization. Behind him is a vintage looking sign. On it is a nod to Joseph Crusher Hogan, the wrestler that Spider-Man took on when he first gained his powers in the comics. And at 3, Battle of New York. At the end of the film, when Peter is back in New York City and on his way to meet MJ for their date, he swings past Grand Central Station which has a statue on top of it. You can only see it for a brief moment, but it is a memorial statue of the original iteration of Avengers, commemorating the Battle of New York, and appears to feature them in their famous circular form during the climax of the first Avengers movie. Moving on to number 2, Mysterio's Tricks. Mysterio has a different origin story in the comics than he does in the MCU. Now in the comics, when he's introduced in Amazing Spider-Man issue 13, Quentin Beck is a special effects guru and stuntman who worked for a major Hollywood studio. He had higher ambitions in the film industry though, but when that didn't work out for him, he turned to crime. As one does. But in the film, Quentin Beck is an ex employee of Tony Stark's. He's the man responsible for Barf, before Tony jokingly called it Barf, and had been let go from Stark Industries for being unstable. Quentin rallied other disgruntled ex Stark employees with this mission to become a new breed of superhero and take the narrative back into their own hands. But despite this, Mysterio's illusions from the comics have gone a long way in inspiring the film. And during his and Spidey's first battle against one another, we get a callback to one of his classic stories in the comics that appeared in Amazing Spider Man issues 66 and 67, in which he tricks 
Peter into thinking that he has been shrunk down in size all by using holograms, post hypnotic suggestions, and of course, sets. You can definitely see the similarities between the two. And last but not least, in at number one, The Incredible Hulk. There's a really cool callback to one of the first MCU films, 2008's The Incredible Hulk, when Peter's web shooters run out and he's looking for a way to go after Mysterio and take down his protective shield of drones, he spots a piece of drone debris that he makes use of. Spider Man grabs the nearby Tower Bridge sign and the drone piece, swings it around, and tosses it up in the air to destroy the other drones. Turns out it is the same sound wave technology used against the Hulk in his 2008 film. Far From Home director John Watts stated in an interview that it was the same way that the Hulk had been stopped, and that the sonic cannons were based on that technology used in the MCU over a decade ago. Alright, there we have it, friends. What other Easter eggs did you spot in the movie? Give us a shout in those comments below. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the part one of our list on our channel. We also have a ton of other Spider Man Far From Home videos that you guys should definitely check out, including Ending Explained and small details you may have missed in the movie. So, what are you guys waiting for? Head on over there, subscribe, and dive in. If you guys dug this video, make sure you spread the love, hit that like button, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you never miss another nerdy video. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next one.